Mm. Your interest God. in the prince is quite unusual. He's, he's knows, so jealous and he's it so hurts. Man. They're and both mad. First men would only have that kind also, of Also, I love this new cousin. armor for the night. Yeah, for, so, the for the city watch. Mm. Great. Or a son. Oh, oh, no, you did it. Oh, yeah. I like that they just oh, made Sir yeah. Tristan Cole's four head bigger. <laughs> they gave him a bigger target. Ooh. Oh, he's not even fighting back because he, he, oh, yeah, he did this on purpose. Oh, yeah, he did this on purpose. You got Viserys he's up there still watching. still down bad. He is so in love with him. <laughs> so in love. Uh, so in love. And your kids. And, and your kids. kids. And your and kids. your kids, you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rockstars. We've jumped ahead another 10 years in Westeros, and along with some new actors portraying our leads, we also have a bunch of new kids running around the Red Keep. <laughs> but who is the father of all these new offsprings? <laughs> who is it? Uh, you guys, this is Big Question Presents Talking Dragons, our weekly fantasy after show, where we talk about everything about dragons. Anything. Anything. Anything and everything. Fantasy, dragons, we, we cover it yeah, all. Yeah, we cover it all. And also, who's the daddy? Who's I'm, the daddy? <laughs> I'm Jessica Clements, and with me today is Brandon Barrick. Hello, hello, welcome back. And as always, we're going to try and not spoil anything from the books. Uh, we'll, we'll reference stuff from the past. We can reference things that are way ahead in the Game of Thrones, but we won't spoil anything on the show. We're watching mm -hmm. it. We're enjoying it. We're going to talk a little Tolkien today as well, covering some Rings of Power. But first, we got to get into this episode of House of the Dragon. Yes. So good. Let's do a quick recap of episode six of House of the Dragon, The Princess and the Queen. Uh, as Jessica said, it's been 10 years since the last episode, and we open on Rhaenyra giving birth to a son. Uh, childbirth was her greatest fear when we last saw her, mm -hmm. uh, but now she's giving birth to her third son, in fact. Uh, she's already given birth to Jaceris and Luceris. They go by, like, Jace and Luke. Mm. Very, very modern. Uh, Laenor will name this third one Joffrey. If you remember that name, that was his lover who got killed by Sir Kristen Cole uh, during the wedding feast. Uh, though it's clear uh, that many in the castle are wise to the fact that Lenor is not the father of any of these kids. Uh, they don't have the trademark hair uh, that we've come to expect from the Targaryens uh, and the Valerians. It's so ridiculous. It's like that is the main thing, and right. they don't have it. They so don't it have clearly it. Clearly, is not keep those kids Lots hidden in the hair. attic. Lots of dark Literally, hair. I would be like, oh, you can't come out. <laughs> Out, they'll, they'll know. Uh, as soon as this third kid is born, like literally it's out of the womb and Allison has called to see the child immediately. Uh, Rhaenyra decides to bring her son to Allison herself, still bleeding from childbirth, you know, passing her afterbirth on the way up the stairs. Brutal stuff, really brutal stuff. Uh, as you guessed it, the relationship between Allison and Rhaenyra has only eroded even further. Uh, it's clearly a constant struggle of small power plays between them uh, here in King's Landing. Meanwhile, our boy Viserys is looking rough. He's down a whole ass arm. He's missing the arm. It's just hanging there desperately. And they let him hold the kid, which I'd, I'd be careful letting my one-armed dad uh, grab the kid. Oh, don't be rude. <laughs> I, at this point now, I'm just feeling bad for Viserys. I'm I like, mean, just let him go. The last episode, there were five times I thought he was going to drop dead. Like, he's bleeding. He's passing out. He's a mess. He's made it 10 more years, but he is, he is looking rough. He is looking really rough. Uh, Allison is aware that Rhaenyra is not having kids with Sir Laenor and is pissed that Vis Viserys won't acknowledge it. Uh, she says to Sir Laenor, do keep trying, Sir Laenor. Sooner or later, you might get one that looks like you. Just devastating stuff. Uh, plus, Sir Kristen Cole is there to feed her hatred of Rhaenyra. Uh, dropping a sea bomb on the girl that he once loved. Oh my god, he's so hurt. He's still. so hurt, and he's I love like, how Allison is like, "You can't say that word. Please yeah, don't say that word." Please don't say that word. Still my daughter. Still my daughter. Still, still my family. Step still my stepdaughter. Still my old best friend. Uh, so Sir, Har Sir Harwin Strong, break bones, is the commander of the City Watch and clearly the father of these three <laughs> sons. Uh, plenty of people in the class uh, in the castle seem to have noticed things as well, including Jaceris. Uh, this also might explain why Jaceris is not great with his dragon Vermax. Yeah, that was that was really sad when Jaceris mm. goes as well. I was like, "Am I a bastard? Am I a baby bastard?" Uh, it's okay, my guy. It's mm. okay. I love I. Mm, I love them. I love them so much. I know. They're so sweet. So, Allison and Viserys have three kids, Aegon, Helena, and Aemon. Aegon has a dragon, Sunfire, uh, but no real ambition to try to take the throne. While well, Aemon's dragon egg never attached, and the other kids like to be tease him about it, and it's really mean, and I hate it. <laughs> they give him a dragon named the Pink Dread. It's a pig. It's a, Look at that. It's a damn pig. <laughs> I hate. I hated this scene. I wanted, I was like, go off. I was like, go off. <laughs> Helena clearly has her own interest in her bugs and maybe is a dreamer like her father. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. There was a lot of talk about dragons 
and pairing the dragons with children. Yeah, and, it uh, and we see Lena later explain to her daughter, whose dragon egg never dragon egg never hatched. She was like, that happens most of the time. Like half the time they don't hatch. But it's also a great analogy for people. Yep. Like half of these kids don't get born, and half the time the mother dies, and it's like a real. Yeah. I Real love the I there. love the metaphor of like yeah some eggs just don't hatch some and it's eggs just like just don't hatch. what did I do <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's not I your do? fault that's just how there's it goes so many kids now uh, we'll uh, get into it but yeah. there's just so many kids running well speaking now. of Lena Dama and Lena are touring the lands with their dragons Caraxes and Vagar yes. Vagar the dragon this is one of the original dragons that came over with Aegon the Conqueror and helped take over Westeros looking old looking big. Looking Huge. just geriatric, but she's she's a big old lady, and she's seen a lot of battle out there. And these two dragons have flown together before. Uh, this these were like these Damon's and uh, Rhaenys's parents flew these dragons mm -hmm. together. So like they're they're good friend dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, Damon and Lena are hanging out in Pentos, uh, and it's there that Prince Reggio wants to make Damon their lord to defend them against the rising threat of the Triarchy. The Triarchy's back, baby. Uh, they've partnered with Dorne, uh, and no one's been watching the Stepstones, so yeah. they're getting powerful again. Uh, Lena wants to go back to Driftmark and die a dragon rider's death, uh, but it's clear that Damon wants nothing to do with Westeros. So Lena's like, I'm sick of just touring around being a show for all mm -hmm. these like rich people who want to see our dragons. Like, mm -hmm. let's go back. I want to be in Driftmark. I want to be where my home is. Uh, Damon and Lena have two twin daughters, Reyna and Bela, mm -hmm. uh, but Lena is pregnant again, and the labor is not going well. Uh, the doctor says the baby will not come out and will likely not survive. Very similar to what Viserys went mm -hmm. through with Emma. Uh, we were talking about this. Damon, it, he he thinks about what's happening, but we both agree Damon would never be like, yeah, kill her, get the baby out. Like, he didn't want to make that call, I don't think. I don't think he did, but I also don't think he cared. It was weird. I think he, he kind like, of, when they were riding together, he seemed to have affection he for her. He loved her, but I think he also was like, I think he still, there's still a goal there in yeah. mind. And I think when she was giving birth, it, I don't know, for me it came off more so like, oh, well, take it out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know. He was like, I don't really care. Well, regardless, Lena's not letting anyone make decision decision yeah. for her. Mm. She drags herself out to her dragon, Vagar, and orders her to burn her alive. Like, And poor Vagar was like, are you sure? Say Drake yeah. Harris one he more said, time, He said, if you say it for the fourth time, yeah. I'm going to have to. Uh, I love how this old it. lady dragon is just like sleeping on the beach and is like, what? And what do you want me to do? The, cor the charred corpse stays uh. there and the dragon turns around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon's like, well, back to bed, I <laughs> well, guess. I guess I'll go back to Job's sleep. Job's done. Who's going to ride my back? <laughs> uh, at King's Landing, Sir Kristen Cole and Breakbones get into it during uh, some sore training with the kids with drinking, uh, with a drinking Viserys looking on. <laughs> he has this like little pose. That was like, that was big dad at the softball game or the t-ball game game energy just like drinking up there like hey that, those two are mine and those two are my grandkids and like can you believe it he didn't say a single thing he was just like oh well when God, there was boys. a point when when chris when uh breakbones grabs uh amond and uh viserys yells at amond he's like amond yeah <laughs> it's like uh this boy this man just laid hands on your boy on your boy uh, so Lionel Strong winds up laying into Kristen Cole, literally getting him right in the face, uh, which really pisses off his dad, the hand of the king, Lionel Strong. Lionel later tries to resign over his son's actions and the shadow that looms over his house, but willfully blind Viserys won't hear it. Yeah. He loves him. Even like uh, Allison's there like, Oh, well, he's say asking. what the shadow is. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? He does agree to let Lionel take uh, Lionel take his son Harwin back to Harrenhal, though. Yeah. Meanwhile, laner has been day drinking <laughs> with Sir Carl. I. <laughs> when you see poor Rhaenyra, you know, just <laughs> trying to comfort her her poor, you know, breast full of milk, yeah. just in so much pain. And you can hear them coming down the hall. Singing. Just singing. And you're like, oh, this is not a good time. This is not a All good I time. All I want to say is men never change, y'all. We never <laughs> men change. Men never change. We and never change. They do it today. They do it in AC. Either way, <laughs> he dreams of going off to the Stepstones to fight, but Renera reminds him he's not going anywhere. Some competing storm metaphors, she commands him to stay. I do love like all these like storm metaphors where it's like, well, the, it's heavy. With you you yeah. pick the metaphor. <laughs> You could apply it to any situation. I, but he's also still pissing me off because I'm like, clearly, how are you? You're just like basking and being yourself right, right. and doing your own I mean, thing. It and it's like, like everyone knows yeah, we I need to settle this. It sounds like a good deal 10 years ago where you're like, oh, yeah. I can just be the king. They're also young. They're I can also yeah, I can hang out. It'll be fun. But like, as he points out, he's a knight. You know, he wants to be out there fighting. He wants to be on his dragon, flying around, killing people. 
He gets a big kick out of that. I mean, he says that. I think if you do, he does it for a week, he'd be like, I'd like to go back. I to also the think castle, he please. just doesn't want to be like. He yeah, doesn't want to be around her. Yeah, yeah, and royalty. He's yeah. like, I had fun when it was me and Joffrey just in the sand, yeah. in the weeds, doing it. In the dunes. It. In the dunes, doing it, doing, doing, it, it, doing it in the dunes, baby. <laughs> uh, but this is, yeah, he's having less fun and everyone knows what's up. And he's, yeah. like, he's tired he of dealing it. with Alicent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the King's Small Council, Lord Beesbury is getting old <laughs> and he can't keep up. He's one of like the OG guys we yeah. saw at the first, the first episode of, of this series and he's still there. He's getting old. Mm. Um, they they kind of bring up the triarchy's rise in the stepstone, so this is obviously going to be a big deal coming down. Yes. Uh, it gets brought up a couple times in this episode. Alicent and Rhaenyra bicker over the best strategy for dealing with it, and as the meeting is ending, Rhaenyra brings up the strife between her and Alicent's family. She lays out a proposal, another wedding proposal. She 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 suggests marrying her son Jaehaerys uh, and Helena, Alicent Viserys' daughter. And also she offers to give them an egg from Cyrax as a dowry, her dragon. Yeah. If her dragon lays an egg, she'll give it as like a dowry, which is like a big deal. But mm. is like, oh baby, this is great. Yeah, great. This is just what we wanted. Let's wrap this up. We all good? We all good? <laughs> and Allison is like, we'll think about it. Please, we'll think about yeah. it. Yeah, oh my, she's not having it. As yeah, soon yeah. as she, she that was my favorite it. line when she left, she was like, well, you can, oh, say it. Yeah, here we go. Allison is pissed uh, that Viserys would even consider mm -hmm. marrying their daughter to one of Rhaenyra's quote, plain featured sons. Which was so good. And what does she tell Viserys? You tell him what she said. She tells Viserys. Ooh, she says, "You may do as you wish, husband. When I am cold in my grave, Ooh, over when, my dead body." When she walks out too, he's yeah, like, yeah. "Oh!" And it's so funny because he, with his one arm, he's like, "Oh, women." And I'm like, "Yeah, the yeah." Bitch, Allison is going to take what you, over when you die. She's like helping him. He's like, "Oh, can I? Yeah. Can I not even use the privy on my own?" <laughs> when he goes to sit down <laughs> again, and he's like, "You're not gonna help me." Yeah, he's he like, said, "You're not gonna help me." Oh, oh. Poor Viserys. <laughs> Alicent and Laris have dinner uh, where Alicent laments her predicament. Laris concocts a plan of his own, which involves cutting out the tongues of some prisoners on death row yes. and putting them under his control. They wear a little mark of uh, a little bee, mm. which is also Laenor had on his cane. And then we see it later attached to the prisoners that go to Hall to burn the Strongs alive, killing both Lionel and Harwin in one fell swoop. Uh, Alicent later discovers that Laris is behind the fire uh, when he basically admits it yeah. uh, and claims she didn't wish for this. She's like, she's genuinely like kind of shocked and mm -hmm. freaked out. Uh, but Laris has shown his willingness to help her achieve her goals uh, and he wants her to bring her dad back. He's like, yeah, let's get Otto back in here. My dad's dead now. Yeah, he straight up here. killed his dad. I mean, we're good. That's our big question today. We'll get into all that. Uh, but before that, we got to check in with Rhaenyra. She decides. Uh, she hasn't even found out about Harwin yet, uh, but she decides it's time to pack up the fam and Sir Carl gets to come too, uh, and they head to Dragonstone. Uh, she's done with King's Landing. She's like, let's get out of here. Let's get back to Dragonstone. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, she's she's down on power right now. So she she said, wants to get out of there. Fam and <laughs> and Carl. You know what? Bring the little fuck boy. Along too. <laughs> bring the little bring the little gimp with you. <laughs> Uh, so that's this episode. Uh, before we get into all of our questions and discussions, we want to remind you to check out NewRockStarsMerch.com where you can grab our newest, latest obsession shirt, Ash and Ruin, inspired by the House of the Dragon series. Look at that. Dark You're Sister. Wearing it right now. I'm wearing it. The little blood worm action on there. Uh, and when you purchase this limited edition, latest obsession shirt, you get the opportunity to get a custom shout out that will appear right here on our Big Question Talking Dragons after show. Uh, so check out all of our awesome merch options awesome merch options over at newrockstarsmerch.com. So, Jessica. Yes. There were a couple of fiery deaths this week mm -hmm. <laughs> on the show. Uh, the book that the show is based on is called Fire and Blood, after all. Uh, but the most shocking death by fire came not at the hands of a dragon, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but rather a man uh, concocting a plan to burn his own brother and father alive in their family castle. But why? Why, Jessica, why? I Getting up there. <laughs> it all leads us to our big question this week. What is Laris's plan? Uh, what What is his plan here? What does he think of doing this? I, <laughs> <laughs> without spoiling anything. Um, yeah, don't spoil anything, but like. I'm not going like, to. Um, it, it just feels like he is the puppet master and he's trying to get everyone to listen like he's he's sowing his own seeds he's like i need to come up in this right and i also think he's kind of after one thing which is 
mainly just destroying people and ripping them apart, and he's really gross and mean. So I think he's just like, hey, as long as I'm in the castle and I can torture people, I don't really. I mean, he I really loved those tongues getting cut out, and he loves starting shit. Yeah, I think he's just not like I don't know how to connect like being a masochist like this and being mm. like uh, also stirring shit within the queen and all that stuff, but it's like. It goes hand in hand, I guess, for him. And he's like, I like this. Yeah. I love sewing this Well, I've shit. seen people point out that, like, Laris, if you think of, like, Varys and Littlefinger, mm -hmm. right, that we know from Game of Thrones, yeah. he's like a combination of the two of those. No, right? 100%. Whereas Littlefinger might put a thousand little plans in place to get to his eventual end. Laris, like, skipped all of that and was like, no, I'll just kill my father and my brother. Uh, Laris seems and jump up a little bit. much more, like, headstrong. And he's like, I'm just going to well, go very headstrong. I'm going to dive in. He and has, also, no one's going to think it's him. Right, right, right. So he has, like, club foot, right? He mm. has he has a, a, a disability. Uh, and his brother is, like, the strongest knight in the land. His dad clearly loves his brother. Uh, they're very affectionate. So Laris, I think, has always felt kind of put off to the side. Yeah. If you remember when we first met Laris uh, during the episode with the hunt, like, he's the one who, like, sat with the ladies and heard all the gossip. Yeah. And he's like, I have better company here, right? He's he's a very smart guy. He knows what's going on all over the place. You know, he was the one in the previous episode that spilled the moon tea. Yes. <laughs> to Allison about what was going on there. So it's oh. like, he's always moving these things in action. As we saw uh, when he kind of revealed to Allison at the end of the episode, he's holding that same flower that he had held in the previous episode when he talks about things that don't belong here mm -hmm. but find their way in anyhow. Oh my God. And I think it was genius to kind of like implicate Allison in this whole thing because now she's stuck. Yeah. Because she's like, well, this is what I wanted. Yes, you're right on and that. It's like, uh, uh, I didn't ask for this, but now everyone's going to assume yep. that I asked for this. He has a, I, I, and maybe that's what we're going to see further in the series is him taking, he's like, I have a piece on you and you yeah, yeah. and you and you. He's got collateral. And I love the series is just more showing of like, Little siblings don't want to stand there. Like, if you're the youngest, you don't want to stand. You want to second sons. Yeah, if you want to be the second, no one wants to be yeah. the second. So they're taking what's there. Because now he's the Lord of Harrenhal. Yeah. By killing his father and Sir Harwin, who was gonna become the Lord of Harrenhal, now he's the Lord of Harrenhal. Yep, 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 so yep. in one fell fiery swoop, he he gets to be the Lord of Harrenhal. He controls all that, and he puts like the queen right in his pocket. Yeah, he's like, Boom. bitch, I owe you. And I now he's you. gonna get. He's gonna get uh, a hand of the king in there mm -hmm. that he knows is gonna be on his side. Otto's gonna love what he hears about all this. Yeah. This is like right up Otto's he, alley. It's it, it, but then it's like I understand your game, but like it's such an easy fall. It like it can all crumble, yeah. and then you will be the one dead at the end of it. So why are you putting yeah. so many eggs in this basket? I would have just called it quits with Allison. I'd be like, oh, I got the queen. Well, this is also, I, it's very smart because yes, he's on team Allison. He's. He's observed a lot over these years, and he's put his stake with her, right? Mm -hmm. He thinks, like, oh, Allison's going to come out on top here in the end. But if she doesn't, if she doesn't come out on top and Rhaenyra gets power, He's right, just going to switch? He could tell Rhaenyra, your stepmother, Allison, made kill. me kill yeah. your lover, the father of three of your children, that he'll never get to see again. Oh, that was so sad when he was saying goodbye, and he was like, when I come back, they won't recognize me, and he's never coming it's back. It's not your kids. It is his kids. It is his kids, but it's not supposed to be. Politically, we know they're not supposed to be together. Listen, we can talk about we the can, logistics look, of how they should have worked this I whole know thing that out. you, you're <laughs> driven by love, and I'm driven by being smart. <laughs> and let me tell you, and let me tell you, you don't even look at me. Don't look at these kids. Act like you don't even know them. We can keep I having mean, sex. I mean, it's not a good look to have <laughs> the book <laughs> The captain of the city watch. Yes, that's what I'm holding like. Holding the b brand newborn baby being like, oh, look at him being so did, did, insolent Did you guys me. just cut people's balls <laughs> off in the first episode? Also, yeah, it's just you're still, you're writing it more. People are going to keep talking if he's more. Why is he in your room? Why is he holding a baby? Stop I mean, letting him near his children. She, she was very cavalier about it. And that, that's kind of been her whole attitude. It is. Remember when she was out in the streets watching the mummer's farce? She said, basically, I don't care what people think. right? I don't care what the small folk think. She doesn't care what people in the castle think about her. They can clearly see what's but going on, but she doesn't care. It's going to be her demise. It, it, it is going to be a upset. downfall for her, I think. And I'm just like, I would have been like, hey, once we have a baby, you can't be you near You can't be it. around you all the time, my guy. You can't be around all the time, my dude. You can come sneak in at night, maybe? I'm Jace is clearly up to what's going on. Yeah. Here. He's figuring Our it out. Our own child knows. He's <laughs> figuring it out. He's like, am I your bastard? Mama. Mama, am I your bastard? <laughs> oh. oh, my poor guy. I love the bastards in this show, except for the one bad one. <laughs> <laughs> They're all bad ones. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Laris's plan here is pretty pretty clever. 
he's clearly also like psychotic. I mean, yeah, no, he's demented. He, he, he is he's not afraid. He's worse than the Maesters. Because I don't know if anyone else died in that fight. We only saw two bodies get carted out, but like in theory, like a lot of people could have died yeah. in that fight. I don't, I don't know what happened. Uh, he picks these guys on death row. Uh, he cuts out their tongues, presumably so they can't spill the beans later. I also assume these guys can't write. Like we assume they can't like write yeah. down what happened, right? They're probably yeah. from Flea Bottom. They're yeah, criminals. Know. They never learned how to read or write. I yeah. do. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, I don't know if that if these guys are gonna come back to bite him in the end. He's obviously oh, yeah. building oh, a little army. Oh, you think they'd still write? Oh no. They yeah, they can't. could still no. write down like Laris made me do no, it. No, that's probably why they didn't care that much. Yeah, they were yeah. just like, we just care about the tongue. Also, that scene of cutting off the tongue. Oh. I was like, even they showed it. They showed oh. it. They showed it. They got it hot and then this they was, sliced it like yeah. it was a cheese. This was, like it was a, butter. Oh. It was. Insane. This was a heavy episode for sounds. Oh yeah. Oh, a lot of those childbirth scenes, the sounds we heard were, were, were very intense. Very intense stuff. Oh. Uh, uh, crazy, 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 crazy stuff. Crazy. Um, so do you think Laris' plan, it's obviously going to fall apart at some point. Like, I don't think... It might. In the world of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, plans okay. fall apart. Like, that's, that's what we the expect, The thing is, right? yes, but I think he's also smart. Mm -hmm. uh, smart. Uh, where I'm like... He, yeah, he was sitting with the ladies. He was like, I'm listening on all the gossip. I yeah. know everything that's going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. So I think he has plan B, C, D, whatever, right, until right. someone physically kills him. <laughs> that's the only time his plan will fail, someone kills him. Because I think that Allison falling through, falling through could he would go to Renera and be like, she got me to do this, man. <laughs> she yeah, got yeah. me to kill your fucking man, dude. I, th I think, yeah, he would I was on your side, second. dude. I was like, Ooh. I think he's team Allison all the way until it doesn't work and then he's going to switch. Well, I don't even want to spoil it. To. We can probably talk more and it'll probably change through our conversation. But he got the high ground this week. <laughs> this his, guy, his power ranking is he, way up. Uh, yeah. Went, Spoiler alert, it's way up. Uh, I was looking at, back in the book. I couldn't find any reference to, like, the bee or, like, uh, if it's supposed mm. to be a bug or a beetle or a bee, it kind of looks like a bee. I thought it was a bee. Yeah, uh, like this might be something they're kind of like inventing for the show. It was very, it was a really cool contextual clue for the audience to be like, oh, I see the bee on the king. Yeah, because otherwise we jacket. just see a guy with a. Yeah, because it's hard to tell. It's like, is he? Do I know that guy? Yeah, I don't, he kind of <laughs> looks familiar. And I'm not trying to be a horrible person. For a minute, I was like, is that Sir? Chris, uh, not Chris, not Sir Kristen. I thought it was uh, Harwin. I yeah, thought it yeah, kind of looked like him I a little like, bit. I was like, I think it's the white men with thick beards in the show that I was like, what is that? <laughs> no, it's not and he was big and bulky yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah. I was he's wearing like, a hood. Is it's tough to tell. It's tough to tell. Uh, we got a lot of other questions to get to uh, on today's episode of Talking Dragons, but first we want to thank one of our sponsors, and that's Avast. Avast is a global leader in cyber protection for more than 30 years and trusted by over 435 million users and prevents over 1.5 billion attacks every month on your computers. Avast's, all in, Avast's new all-in-one solution, Avast One, helps you take control of your safety and privacy online through a range of features. Avast One is their best protection yet, giving you everything you need to take control of your safety and privacy online and accessible through a single, easy-to-use interface. Avast's multitude of features provide you with privacy and security as you scour the web and even help with your machine's performance. Uh, personally, I like Avast's award-winning antivirus that stops viruses and malware from harming my devices, as well as their data breach monitoring that will alert you if online accounts have been compromised. This is really great, because a lot of times the companies don't tell you, like, oh, they hacked our system and they got all your information. True. You don't hear that from the company, Avast will let you know and just tell you that you need to change your password. They even have PC Speedup, which optimizes the background activity of your apps in order to speed up your PC and make it work real smooth. Thank you to Avast for supporting Big Question. Confidently take control of your online world with Avast One. It helps you stay safe from viruses, phishing attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cyber crimes. Learn more about Avast One at Avast.com. Again, that's Avast One at Avast.com. We also want to give a quick little shout out uh, to our friends at Secret Lab who made these really cool House of the Dragon sigil office chairs. They also have some Game of Thrones office chairs. Uh, they're really nice, they're high quality. You can find all of these models they have over at secretlab.co slash Game of Thrones. Again, that's secretlab.co slash Game of Thrones. Uh, they make really nice chairs. We have yeah. these around the office now. We have to do a ton of research for this show. We gotta sit and watch the show. Look at these beautiful chairs. Oh, look at the stitching. Look oh, at the so stitching. Nice. Look at the stitching. Oh, so nice. These are very comfortable. Nice leather chairs, uh, and they look so cool. They have like all sorts of different designs. You can check them out on their website. Again, that's secretlab.co slash 
Game of Thrones. Uh, and thank you to Secret Lab for sending us these chairs. They're so nice and comfortable. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Jessica's I'm obsessed. Also, I'm obsessed because you also get to choose which in the office, which house yeah, you're yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. There was a big debate over I'm oh, House Targaryen. <laughs> which so. one people get? <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Well, Watch it's out. also because uh, well, I didn't want I didn't want the Starks anyways. But Tommy was like <laughs> Tommy was Tommy grabbed the Starks. The Starks. Yeah, yeah, he and grabbed that Starks like, real fast. Give out Targaryen one. Who will I we do give not the want Lannister, Lannister one to? Zach. Time will tell. Time will tell. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting that House Lannister, I, especially after seeing um, the one in this this season, House of the Dragon. Uh, jo is it Jason? J is it Jason? Well, Jason's one of them. They're, yeah. they're twins. I hated him. <laughs> Either way, I hated him. Yeah, Jason like, and Tyland are the two. Yeah, uh, no, but yeah, Jason is a real jerk. It's yeah, true. Yeah, I didn't like Jason. Uh, Jessica, I got another question for you. A big question for Sense Talking Dragons. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna ride Vagar now? I think it's gonna be uh, the daughter. I the mean, daughter they kind of said that. Doesn't that doesn't have they, Yeah, yeah. That doesn't have an egg because you can still learn to ride a dragon. Right. Other people, Lainor even learned to to ride. Uh, well, yeah, Lena. Lena tells her daughter like, "Hey, I didn't. My dragon didn't hatch either, but I get to ride Vagar now. Yeah, exactly. Vagar is like riding uh, the Michael Jordan around. That, honestly, real like, talk. Real talk. This is an yeah, all-star dragon. Okay. Absolutely. Ba uh, Balon's dead, right? The other big one that came with Aegon in the initial conquest. Mm -hmm. But Vagar's still around, and Vagar. <laughs> She ain't, she ain't putting up with no BS. I love I mean, it. She's a big old dragon. And it'll be nice for her because it kind of yeah. feels like that same connection that she had with her mom. With her with mom, her. yeah, yeah. I yeah, I I hope it, it is her that gets to take control of the dragon. And also, I don't think, unlike we're seeing with uh, freaking uh, Rhaenyra's children trying to train their dragon, R Vagar's so old that it's like, you don't really need to tame me. I'll do whatever well, you yeah. want. Well, yeah, well, that's the other thing, but will it listen? Uh, yeah, that's They the make truth. a big point of, point, you know, when they're training the young kids uh, in the dragon pit, that kind of, uh, I don't know, dragon trainer guy is like, you know, who's only speaking in High Valerian, uh, which <laughs> I did like, I did like that the kids know a little High Valerian, yeah. but then not enough to understand his full conversation. They, get a and they don't even translate it for the audience, which I thought was really fun, because mm. we're kind of in the kid's perspective. But they say like, once you bond with a dragon, it'll only listen to you, right? But will it? Will Ve I don't know if Vagar will listen. The thing It'll is, listen, watch it and then that, she'll be watch, like, eh, I don't want to listen. Watch us get that me. heartfelt moment, like where she's like sad about her mom being dead, and yeah. goes up to the dragon, like puts her forehead on uh, the dragon, and the, and the dragon, dragon's like, like hey, I let her say Drakkar is like five times. She, she said she it. Okay, really she's still, it. don't be mad at me. Don't, be, don't come for me. Uh, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> I mean, they make a big point on the show about the power of the dragons, right? We have four dragons. They have mm -hmm. ten dragons. Da, 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 da. That's very important, and we know. If, you, if you're, we're about to have the dance of the dragons, right? When these kind of chess pieces start battling it out. Uh, having an old dragon like Vagar, you can, a good way to kill a dragon is with a bigger, older dragon. <laughs> and Vagar has killed other dragons before mm -hmm. uh, during like the battle under God's eye and stuff like that. Uh, so having a dragon like, ba I mean, Vagar, you saw it next to uh, Caraxes, the blood worm, Huge. who is a big, long, lanky dragon, but Vagar could eat. The so for full. breakfast. That scene was so insane yeah. of just, look how big that thing is. Yeah, yeah. So, like, having Vagar on your side, that's a powerful ally. Mm -hmm. uh, so, whoever gets Vagar is going to have a lot of power uh, in this show. I got another question for you, Jessica. Yeah. Uh, this one, I, I thought they would address it. I don't know. Do we think Damon yeah. is the father of these twins? These twin girls. There, There is an interesting line uh, where the one daughter who's a dragon didn't hatch... Uh, apologies, I forget which one's which. They're twins. Uh, <laughs> and they do look very She's, she's like, dad doesn't even talk to me, yeah, basically. Because of my he's, he's real standoffish. And even at the end, uh, you know, after we see the, the charred corpse, the kids are looking at their mom's charred corpse. Clean the beach, please. <laughs> he said, Clean this look at the her. Beach. Look at her. Look how kind of dismissive he is. He's not hugging them. No, He walks that's why away. I also am like, he truly is like, I'm unemotional. Well, and we know from the last episode, he never consummated his marriage with Rhea Royce. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a couple times throughout the show his impotency when it comes to love and the ladies. Yeah. Do we think that he was able to get uh, these two heirs in one session, at least one session of lovemaking with his wife, and he produces these two children? Do you think? Do you think he's their dad? Mm. I have, I, I'm questioning it. I don't think he is, but then I was also, the reason I don't think he is was when she, one got an egg, one didn't get an egg. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, it's iffy. It's iffy, sometimes it doesn't work, but also right, if we right. want to think lineage, maybe there's something fishy in the lineage. But it's like, it still is 50-50 with twins, so I don't know. 
and I, I love the storyline where it's like, I'm the strongest man. I am strong. I'm murder. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. And it's like, but you're impotent. Yeah, so, the one thing you can't do is the, like yeah, secure you your family's lineage. So I still want to keep that storyline going for my own sake of how, like, I just think it's great uh, to yeah. show that he is weak in one point and not at all. So I'm like, uh, I want to say it's not his kid. I yeah, say maybe, not maybe not. And again, it, it, but she's like, okay with. She still loves him, but she's yeah. also she was also like what fourteen when she like physically they danced, right? Yeah. So th he was twelve <laughs> when, when she was offered to. When she was dating. <laughs> when she went through a walk in the garden with yeah. Rosario, she was like twelve. <laughs> she was offered to the brother. And then it was like a few years go by, maybe four years. Man, I forget. Uh, two to four years. Right. So she is closer to fifteen, sixteen right. at the wedding. So now she's like twenty six. Well, and well, the reason she went up to Damon was like, oh, the girls talk about yeah, big yeah, bad yeah. So it's like, yeah, you're probably so impressionable. This is the first right. man you're sleeping with. The first everyone sees you with the hot, the hot stud. Yeah, that's yeah. the brother of the crib, <laughs> like the fucking. Well, the there ghoul. was there was also like that marriage that was being arranged uh, with Bravo, with someone from Bravo's with it's her. A lie. I don't think that ever happened. It was a lie. I think it was a lie. I think too. it was a lie just to get uh, them to go quicker. But I but think she did she, seem to care for Damon. Like but she's that's what I think. Affectionate with I think him. she genuinely is like. I, I love him and I think but I think it's in a bad part. Like I think Rhaenyra yeah. was like, I'm not a fool and you're a fucking yeah, yeah, idiot. Yeah. But Lane unfortunately like I mean Rhaenyra was crazy. always like, do it. If you're this big bad guy, then just yeah, do go it. Ahead. Show it. Put your Show money where your mouth is. And but Lane is a like, sweetie. Mm, do it. Lane is yeah, like Lena and she probably honestly feels bad. She's that been on he, the road for ten years, flying around and she's like, I just wanna go home and I I wanna and like, like do my no duty. He's like, I kinda like being on the road. It's kind of fun. Don't you like being a weird now circus? He's, now he's got these two kids. Uh, and not that there's anything wrong with daughters. He has these two daughters. The the baby that wasn't born, uh, we know in the book it was still born and it was a male. So we can assume it was a male. For a second, I thought the child could have survived. That's actually my next question for you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. uh, for a second, I thought, well, they're doing this fire. So in the book, Lena uh, has the stillborn child. child and then uh, it's described, and again, remember, the book Fire and Blood is, it's told, it's a story that was passed down and being mm -hmm. retold, so unreliable narrator. But basically, she goes out to her dragon uh, for what people assume is so she can have one last ride, mm -hmm. uh, but dies yeah. before she gets on a dragon. I love the agency that they've done with the show here, where instead of that, it's like, no, I'm not gonna die during childbirth, I'm going to die a dragon rider at the, in, in the fiery breath of a dragon, yeah. right? We know that like Targaryens, they have like a little fire resistance to them, right? We saw in the first ep episode, Viserys kind of holding his hand over the fire. Mm -hmm. In Game of Thrones, Daenerys, the unburnt, the unburnt! For a second, I thought like, baby can't come out, burn me away, baby will be Come there. out? Baby will still nah. be alive. Now, this baby doesn't survive in the book, so this would be a big change for the yeah. show. For a second, I thought it was possible. I there's, thought there was going to be like a baby in the ashes, too many times which was like in this show where the I'm saddest just like, thing ever. Oh, maybe they'll stray from the book, and they don't. Yeah. And I and they they can't. And so I they, well they could they can do little things like the little bee. They right, can right, do right. those little things. They can do tiny things like well, that. Well, they and they can also like change the age a little. They can bit. they can give us exactly what happened as opposed to the book, which is like we don't know what happened. Yeah. Right? It's just I keep being like, oh, this isn't like. Uh, Harwin Strong dying. I was like, oh, this isn't it, is it? And I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> five episodes. Yeah. To, if, five you, if you had got, read the book and you're like, oh, they're going back to Heron Hall. Uh oh. E <laughs> but it was like, we're going back to Heron Hall. I was like, oh, they're going to travel. It's going to take like. It'll uh, take a, a few while. weeks. Next thing I know, he's sleeping and there's a, a red line in the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, boy. <laughs> His son is screaming and he can't open I can't open the door. <laughs> Dad, they also, I'm going to die. They really didn't shh. I mean, we saw Lionel, and we saw him calling out for Harwin, and we kind of see Harwin for a second. Mm -hmm. But then they also drag out these bodies that they don't show, and I was like, "Is he dead?" And then, you think Lionel Strong, the dad, is alive? Well, no, I wasn't sure who, because they weren't really clear with it. But then at the end, Laris is like, "No, they're dead." Oh, they're dead. <laughs> oh, they're dead. Oh my god! Just poor got the raven. Is. Just got the raven. They yeah, dead. They dead. <laughs> I sent it actually. <laughs> <laughs> I sent it around. It just flew right back. Um, okay. This next thing I want to talk about, and we're going to be careful with this because we don't want to spoil anything, uh, but I feel like we have got to talk about it at this point. What is up with these rats, Jessica? There's a rat per episode, the, and it's doing something weird. We're seeing rats all the they're, time. They're, you would, I, at first, I was like, oh, these shots are just to signify how dirty or open or wide these spaces are. Right. And then once the rats started getting closer, I was like, okay, give me a second. What the, <laughs> what the hell is this about? Yeah, yeah, we're seeing these rats. You know, he sees it again. 
Uh, we've seen a rat in the last episode eating the blood of Joffrey uh, in, in, in the banquet hall or in the throne room. Yeah, I mean, these rats are important. They are, it is gonna pay off if you're watching and being like, wow, they keep showing these rats. It'll be important. I don't know when, I can't tell you when, and I can't tell you why. And uh, I can't tell you why. But just pay attention to them, they're there. I mean, people have uh, made the analogy to The Departed, right? You see the rat at the end of that movie, it signifies like there's a rat, you know, like, there's obviously like a rat in the castle too. Several oh, different rats, right? I thought it was Laris just, is somewhat of a yeah, rat. I was like, castle. I thought it was just that there's a rat in the castle. Yeah, you've got a, uh, you could say Harwin was a rat, like you know, having kids with mm. the, with the heir to the Iron Throne, like 100. out of wedlock. Like these, there's rats everywhere. I think it also signifies the decay, right? Mm -hmm. We kind of heard at the beginning of this series, like King's Landing. This was a time of peace, right? Through Jaehaerys, everything's great. At the beginning of this season, you know, they talk about when Damon was in charge of the City Watch. It was like city's a mess. Like there's crime everywhere. Like things are in bad shape. I think the castle itself is kind of in decay. Mm -hmm. and this is showing that these rats are able to see ground. It also points to like these secret tunnels, right? There's like passageways in the kingdom you don't know about. Yeah. Uh, and things going on there. We saw Rhaenyra using her secret tunnel again this week to do a little eavesdropping. She's a little rat. <laughs> She's a little rat creeping little around rat. the castle. Uh, so yeah, the rats are important. Don't worry, folks. The rats are important. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the rats. Um, do you have anything more you want to talk about with House of the Thrones before no, we House of Thrones? How, oh, House, of the, <laughs> House of the Dragon before House of the we uh, House uh, of Powers do a little something else. No, I think I can't wait till we do our who's okay. Okay. Who's on the high ground. Well, now. before we get to our power rankings, it's time to do a little talking token. Flip a coin. That's right. We got another episode of Rings of Power this week. This one was called Partings. A lot of people leaving this week. Hmm. A lot of people saying goodbye. Hmm. Um, the most important thing this episode, I think, we saw some mysterious folks uh, checking out the spot where the stranger fell from the sky, the yes. little meteorites crash. Do you know what those people are? I have no idea who they are. I, uh, are. I am not well read on the Tolkien. Same. So I'm very mysterious as to, these people look like actual evil people. They do. Uh, Adar, I mean, Adar, you see Adar, he's evil. See the orcs, they're evil. These people looked <laughs> evil. They were like, where's our evil being that fell from the sky? They're clearly like zealots. Yeah, are they helping? Are they the ones helping Sauron? Are they there for Sauron? Are they there for something else? They had like a shield that kind of had the star pattern on it. Yeah. These are clearly not good people. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Browen, she's trying to rally the people of the Southland uh, to fight against Adar and the orcs. Uh, but good old Waldrig uh, tries to talk them all out of it and winds up convincing about half of the people to go with him to basically turn themselves into Adar yeah. and say, we love you. Uh, it's a bad idea, guys. Uh, Ron Deer has a little archery training with uh, Theo. I like to say his boy, Theo, uh, who I still think you is secretly still think his, son. his son. Uh, Theo still hates him, but maybe respects him. I don't know. He winds up showing Ron Deer the blade hilt. He's like, oh, I hate you, but hey, check this thing out. Yeah, he's like, uh, but also, okay. <laughs> also look at this. Uh, Arondir recognizes it. He shows him a forgotten wall mm -hmm. that has the blade carved into it. And Arondir calls it a key, yes. not a sword. Uh, but to what, we do not know. I hate this scene. And the reason, <laughs> I, hate, the reason I hate this scene is everyone in the village just, were they eavesdropping or were they just like, oh, he's looking at something. Let's all get yeah, up let's from all what take we're a doing. Look at I it. said, you nosy mothers, get out of there. Yeah, they were yeah. all like, mm. There was two different times this village was like, let me get in everyone's damn business. Yeah. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> Stay out <laughs> of my away. business. Stay away. Uh, meanwhile, in Numenor, Galadriel is still trying to talk Hallbrand into going with her to the mm -hmm. Southlands. Uh, they got five ships and 500 Numenorians. It's not going to be five ships for long. Uh, Galadriel does a little orc killing training session of her own with some of the new recruits who try really hard to hit her. Watch this scene again. I mean, they, this is not wooden swords, folks. This isn't wooden sword training. These are real swords. And she's like, try and strike me. And they're like, okay. And they come 100% at her. Intense, intense. Uh, meanwhile, Farazan's kid, uh, Kemen, really wants his dad to take over Numenor and not help the elf. And his dad's like, just chill out. I got a plan. Uh, Kemen later sets a boat on fire, <laughs> which also sets off one more boat. Uh, Ilsador is there and saves him for some reason. I don't know why you would why, save this kid. Why was he saying? Because he loves his sister and his sister wants to bang him. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. Uh, in the end, Halbrand does agree to tag along with the Numenor uh, convoy. And everyone heads out for real this time, including Ilsador gets to go on the boat. His buddies get to go on the boat. Uh, Alendro's going out. The sister stays behind. She's like the only one that stays behind. But everyone is finally for real, actually this time, mm -hmm. heading off to Middle-earth. Uh, also, Muriel's dad, 
the old king. He got out of bed because he's worried about the safety of the kingdom, and he warns his daughter not to go to Middle Earth. He says, all that awaits you there is darkness. Honestly? And she's like, dad, <laughs> my whole life you've been you, preaching yeah. about these elves. No. And I'm about to go. I've done everything you asked. And now you're like, don't go? I don't want to hear it, dad. I don't care. I was like, girl, that's <laughs> a little too late, dad. I said, that's it is a big omen. omen. I said, my dad finally rose up from his bed. But also, like, your crazy old dad sentence. is saying crazy stuff. But he said a full sentence. I'm I know, like, but she's also been know. touching the planet here and seeing this like, wave destroying Numenor. She's trying to do something look, here. Look, look, I know in the long run, neither of them are safe. <laughs> neither of them are going to get out well. But, eh. Eh, I would have listened to my dad. Uh, the Harfoots are still traveling along with the stranger. You know, they make uh, Dory and the gang be in the back. Uh, and the Harfoots are still blaming the stranger for everything that's going wrong. They're in these woods and they're uncharacteris uncharacteristically bare. Uh, all the animals are gone. And this, is, this sucks. And they're like, this is the stranger's fault. Uh, and then some wolves show up and the stranger does a little magic to scare them off. And yeah. suddenly the Harfoots are like, the stranger's great. We love this guy. This is awesome. Uh, though the magic he does does seem to cause some physical damage. Uh, to his arm, uh, so he winds up putting his arm in water and like kind of goes into a magical trance and is saying these words and like Dory touches him and like gets frozen and like ice is coming up like mm. crazy stuff and it's so it's like he's doing magic but he doesn't know it almost. Yeah. Very, it's very also weird like stuff. oh yeah, touch the arm of the magic man. Yeah, that also fell from yeah, the don't sky. touch the frozen you arm, lady. Stoop. And then she runs like oh, and I'm like, now are, you're you are you are <laughs> you surprised, <laughs> you dummy? Oh, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Durin's having dinner with the elves uh, and things are a little tense, especially over a misappropriation stone table, which we later find out was a made up story. As was, soon as it happened, I said it's not real. It's I not said, real. Not this real. is great. Not real uh, High King Gil Gilgalad uh, and Elrond share some words about the true intention of the elves in Casa Dune. Uh, it's true. They were looking for the light of the lost Cimmeril, aka the Mithril. This was a little bit of uh, show invention of the history of Mithril here. Mm -hmm. Big change to the lore. Uh, but Elrond, he decides to stay loyal. So, you know, the king tells him, like, hey, I actually did send you there so you could find this yeah. stuff. So tell me where it is. And Elrond's like, I literally swore on a mountain that I wouldn't spill this. And like, if anything, these elves should know that like oaths and like promises like that, that's a big deal. And if you break a promise, it has like curses. Yeah. He, he promised to the earth. Yeah, literally. That, that he would not. So and he, he just stayed true to it. It makes me so mad that they were. he was literally like, well, no, tell me. And it's like, yeah. you think we're going to die without the mithril, yeah. but we're really going to die if I tell I you where like, the mithril is. I don't like is. this High King Gil, Gil Gallant at him. all. I don't I like what he's him. up to. Uh, so he, they were there to find the mithril, and it turns out they're dying. The light of the Eldar is fading. Uh, Celebrimbor thinks that if they can get enough mithril, it can save the elves because it has like this light inside of it. Their tree that they basically, it's their farmer's almanac, right? It's got all these like black veins going in it. And they're like, we're dying. We're supposed to live forever and we're dying. We got to do something. Uh, so Elrond is left with the burden of deciding if he should break his oath to his friend, Prince Durin. And what he does is very admiral. He comes clean to the prince. He's like, this, I, listen, I didn't know what was going on, but I'm telling you now, we were there to like, you know, get the mithril uh, and help with our impending doom. And Durin's like, oh, impending doom? I love it. <laughs> Durin is basically like, if I can be in charge of the elves, we can, we can work. I love his we dumb work together. behavior where he's like, no, yeah, say yeah. it again. Say no, it again. Say it again. Say I'm the boss. Your guys' life is in my Say opinion. my name. Mm. Say my name, elf. Uh, <laughs> elf. Elf. So Waldrick brings his bunch of Southlanders to Adar and the orcs uh, and the orcs to turn themselves in. And Waldrick pledges his loyalty to Sauron. And Adar's like, <laughs> what did you just say? Don't say that name to me. <laughs> <laughs> like it's his dad or something. He's like, like I'm Adar. Okay, I'm not it. Sauron. I loved it. I and loved I love Waldrick's I like, uh, or whoever you are, I'll, I'll follow you, oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, hey, kill this kid. <laughs> Which we don't it. see, but you know Waldrick totally does oh. it. This is also the kid that left Theo behind mm -hmm. previously. So Which you, you were mad about. It. I genuinely was like, I would have done the same thing. Nah. And I would have ended up being killed. That <laughs> that kid uh, deserves to if lie. This was deserves to die. Choose your own adventure. I would be the first one dead in this storyline. Yeah. But also, I love Adar. So I the Numenorians it. are heading off to Middle Earth, and we see the orcs marching on Osterith. Uh, they're coming. They're, they're coming. coming. Uh, so that was this episode of Rings of Power. Uh, most importantly, we got we got to do this every episode pretty much. We're on Sauron who, watch. Who, who is Sauron? Who, 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 who. I still think it's Halbrand. I still think Halbrand is I, Sauron. I don't know. It's so interesting to get his storyline more because yeah. then I'm like, mm, does that make him Sauron? Not like that, but like Sauron's past was literally just giving up. Right. I want to know what's in this pouch, first of all. <laughs> yeah, that he keeps taking off his neck and takes it off, back. and he takes it back, and he puts it down, and he comes back and grabs it. It's just some it. soil. Uh, just some soil. Uh, 
maybe some cocaine. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's actually spicy. <laughs> the uh, spice must flow. Oh God. Um, I still just wanted to be Theo, and I think it'd I be love fun. this idea that it's I Theo. I think it'd be fun if Theo, it, once his mom dies, that's when he's gonna pull up, right? And he's gonna take that hill, and he's gonna open some damn portal that yeah. opens everything, and all hell breaks loose. Um, yeah, I just wanted that to be him. I think I it. I mean. I know they like want it to be the stranger, <laughs> right? They want us to think it's the stranger. Yeah. He falls from the sky. He kills some things. But, like, once he found out he killed those fireflies, once he, he throws out what peril is, he feels really bad about it. I think I, I like when someone, I can't remember, someone said, I think it's maybe been said twice, it's like, he he was the omen. He was just like the, like, oh, here's one other right, right. step he's of it. He's a sign. Yeah, he's a sign. He's not him. He's just like a sign. Right. Is is he is it his magic that enables Sauron to rise to power? Does Sauron, like, yeah. use him in some way? Uh, yeah. It's it's clear that those weird zealots who came to the to the spot of the meteorite, yeah. they are there to help Sauron get to power, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Uh-huh. Do you think Adar is, like, against Sauron? He seemed really pissed yeah. to hear that name. Which is interesting. Um, 100%. I think he's like more so like, I want to be the strongest. Mm. I don't want this fricker to come. Yeah, I want to yeah. be Sauron. Unless he is Sauron. He's like, don't blow up my spot, guy. Dude, shut up. Don't now say that name. Kill this kid. Kill this kid. Now kill this kid. Kill this kid. Okay. Who had the better combat training this right. week? Okay. We had two combat training scenes, which I think was a, a very interesting parallel. You have Galadriel fighting with the Numenor boys. Yeah. Or... Sir Kristen Cole with the uncles and his and, the, and their nephews. The real question is who's better, Galadriel or Sir Kristen Cole? And I think Ugh. it's Galadriel. I think it's Gal- Galadriel. Gal- I mean, Galadriel. she has the power of an elf and can do those fun little yes. hops and. And she also has been doing it clearly much longer. Thousands of years, has, right? Well, she. I guess she technically hasn't gone to war. Her brother did. Uh, she went to war. She was. You don't remember the first episode? She was chasing down orcs all over the place. I She's been remember. in some battles. God, I'm so behind. She hasn't been in the war war because the war was kind of wrapped up yeah. when she comes on the field. But she yeah. was like chasing down the little like leftover pockets. Okay. So yeah, I still, but I still think it's her. She's yeah. a, she's much better fighter. I was just I was just blown away <laughs> at how hard those guys were trying. I mean, like, I know the, the to get to be the lieutenant, you gotta get a hit, but like. You could cut her arm off, dude. Like, she's still they an elf. They were trying so hard. Well, that was the whole point. They were never going to get her. I guess they so. Well, one anything. guy gets a little nick and I was so Congratulations. Mad. I you said, get to girl, be it. don't you give him anything. Yeah, it's also like, don't name him. Like, be like, <laughs> you guys got to do better next time. Yeah, th- be like, okay. You don't have to pick today. You're now the lieutenant for <laughs> scratching up my dress. You don't have to pick today. Gr- no. I mean, I do love, I, I do like Sir Kristen Cole, you know, like, kind of calling out uh, uh, Aegon and being like, Okay, tough guy. Lord of the Straw, he calls him or whatever. He's like, now you fight me. Now you're going to fight me. And he takes out both of Aegon and Aemon. It's like, bop, 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 just taking them both down. I like it. I also love, ugh, poor Harwin, man, seeing his son out there getting getting beat up. And he's like, he grabs him by the chest plate. Real, real like uh, uh, a peewee football action where you mm. grab the shoulder pads, grabs him by the chest plate. And we don't hear what he says, but you know, he's like, you better get over there. He said, you better look kick here. his ass. Look here, I'm not look your here. fucking I'm dad. Not your, if, like, I were your dad if I was your dad, if I were your dad, I'd be, I'd be very disappointed. I'd be embarrassed be very right disappointed. Now, like, Listen, your grandpa's up there watching, and I don't mean Viserys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean him. <laughs> and I don't Both mean Both of your Viserys. grandpas are up there, okay? I don't mean Viserys. I don't mean you the old to, one be, okay, drinking cool. from that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, some good, some good action this week. Okay, here's here's a here's a big question for you. What was a bigger kind of power play, mm. uh, uh, kind of Machiavellian move here? Is it Durin convincing the elves to give him the stone table and carry it all the way back? Yes. I love that little shot of the elf kind of like stumbling, which is what I need more of this show. Show me like the elf stumbling and like <laughs> stuff like that. Was that a bigger power play? Or or Laris basically implicating you, Alicent in the murder of his it's family. It's Laris, but the the the, the, the door the stone, one, the stone was really funny. That was pretty it good. It was really good. And to be like, you gotta carry it. <laughs> Because, like, at, what are the elves going to be like? They're going to be like, that's not true. That's not yeah. true at all. And he's like, we use it for our tombs. <laughs> we use it in the most spiritual aspects of our livelihoods. And they're, what are you going to be like, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. They're like, shit, dude, now we got to carry this now big ass table. And I lost my table. <laughs> I, I lost my table. We have nowhere to have meetings. We got to find a new table. We got to find a new table. The inconvenience is so good, but the actual storyline of this is going to last longer is Laris. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Laris, that, that was a very good thing, but... You gotta imagine Durin was like thinking on the fly there. That was pretty Yeah, no, like, no, quick. I loved it. I think it's great. I, just, I think it's great, but compared to this, I can't. Also, this is still something, say something like, it took you elves weeks to decide to take a shite. 
or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. Just great stuff. I, I love the idea of like time, how time works on Rings of Power, mm -hmm. where it's like the elves are so concerned about like, you know, the the bigger picture because they live for so long, yeah. but now faced with like their own mortality, they're suddenly like in panic mode. Mm -hmm. And like, we gotta build this giant we furnace. Gotta we gotta find Mithril. We, we gotta, gotta steal from the elves. Oh, like, from the uh, from the dwarves. the dwarves. And I'm like, you guys are also, yeah. I can't wait. The, honestly, genuinely can't wait for the next episode where the king's like, absolutely not. <laughs> He's gonna be like, what did I tell you? I told you he was up to no good. He was coming yeah, here to yeah. take what's ours and they can all die. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you think someone like, and this is, again, coming from a gentleman like me who has not read the, the books. And you're about to ask a woman like me who has also not <laughs> I'm read gonna, the books. If it's plausible that someone, I don't trust the elf king, Gil Gallad, at all. Like, he is so no, shady. he's bad. And so rude. No. I mean, he was the one who sent Galadriel back. He was trying to, like, get Galadriel out of there by being like, if we send her back, maybe it'll, like, fix the tree. No. And he knew it wasn't going to yeah, fix the tree. Yeah, he just wanted to get her fucking Yeah, out. yeah, he just he wanted to like, get her out of there. Come in. Get, yeah. get, get, get. And get, Elrond's get. just trying to do right by Which, everybody. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe I am on his side. Because Gal Galadriel, she was pissing me off I mean, for Galadriel, she pissed she's me off from time to chill. Time. This was maybe the first episode she didn't piss me off. Actually, no, because she named him Lieutenant, and she shouldn't have. <laughs> but, like, she she's just been upsetting me in ways where I'm like, you're not recognizing the bigger picture, A. She's so focused. You're so yeah, focused. Yeah. And I love that interaction with her. And I think it was Hallbrand where he was like, no, you have to tell me. You're making me go back to a place I don't want right, to go right. to. You have, the, the little as you yeah. can do is tell me why. And she's like, I just can't. Well, that's I why I think Hallbrand is Sauron, because he's playing oh, her yeah. like a fiddle dude he's using her he's using her so good okay. so well and she's so it's interesting uh, we talk about time you know she's so focused on the immediacy of this mm -hmm. but she, you know it it is happening and they need to stop it but like for her to be so focused on right now and not see the bigger picture not see is the dangerous bigger it's so that's how Very sauron's dangerous. gonna lead to power you it guys are gonna right. you're gonna be so focused on your own shit that he's gonna come in and be like <laughs> <laughs> that's how i'm how's he gonna come in <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. He's a little goblin man. Okay, Jessica, it's time for your favorite part of the show. We're gonna do our power rankings. Eee, okay, I love the power. Uh, rankings. And we'll start. We'll start with uh, House of the Dragon. Okay. Who is up this week on House of the Dragon? Who gained the Laris. most power? Laris. 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 Strong, my and the guy. Thing is, Absolutely no one else gained power. Can you give me anyone else that gained power? Maybe Sir Allison? Carl. Sir Carl gained so much power. Okay. He gets that to go on he vacation. Got, oh, he got some some kind of power. <laughs> he gets to keep it. doing what he's doing. Okay, and now he gets to go to Dragonstone. Okay, so Carl. <laughs> so few people get to go to Dragonstone. <laughs> but, but it, he worked uh, hard, and he worked hard to get the Dragonstone. I mean, yes, Laris is way up this week. I yeah. think Allison is obviously I, way up. By proxy, though, through She made Laris. Rhaenyra look like a fool. Uh, I mean, she called out the fact that Rainier was like lactating, which was like rude as hell. But then I, uh, that stairway scene where it was like, you can do this when I'm cold yeah. in my grave is a reminder that like, he's still the king, yeah, girl. Yeah. Like he, whatever he says goes. Right, but yeah, you he's can't all, do anything. she's, she's mad. She's all, he's such a, a limp reed in the wind. I know, but like, she still has to deal with him. So it's right, like, that's but she's why I'm like, dealing she's still stagnant. Him. She's still, I think she's still stagnant. And she's about to get her dad back, which he's, he's not going to mess around. He's going to walk in and be like. Yeah. And Viserys will kill do whatever Otto Hightower says. Kill, kill those. Kill kids. her, ki Renee's. I mean, <laughs> that's would she would she bust in on it <laughs> on her son busting out? You know what I'm talking about? She didn't uh, even blink. She's just like. Also, oh. was that the window that Tommen jumped out of? I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking it looks exactly. I was like, this is the exact shot of when Tommen. I mean, I assume a lot of the windows in the red keep. Yeah, but the it's same. the exact same shot before he like the zoom. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like out. him standing there, but. <laughs> Also, yeah, you said it's he, David Tennant's son? It's That's David Tennant's son. son. It's Ty Tennant. He's 20 years old. Uh, a sweet, sweet angel baby. So, so you're saying lots of baby Targaryens going through that window. <laughs> you're disgusting. Dropping, you dropping seen, kids. Have you seen this? Someone made a video where they're like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> it's them walking underneath. <laughs> Is it raining, my lord? What is that? Oh, it's it's uh it's literally the same scene in Succession, and I freaking hate it. Oh it's yeah, yeah. It's some weird like power thing. It's just like I this standing is mine. over the city. This is mine. This is and mine. I'm like, Men are but weird. it's also like he has no aspiration to be king, right? No. Poor poor Alicent has risked it all, and now this boy. I mean, <laughs> he genuinely. She busted. Is not. <laughs> He's like, mom, come on, and thank God he like hit it. You know, for a Targaryen to well, not try and. Uh, bang his mom in that situation is a big move for him. Good job, my guy. Uh, I don't think he cares because he genuinely was just. He doesn't like, want to be. He king. brushed back his hair and went, 
Ugh. I didn't do it. He's like, I'm not gonna be the king. Who cares? And she's like, of course, this place. She's like, she's like, bitch, you better be joking. You, you better be joking. It is, it, I love how we went to a house that was more women than anything. Yeah. And now we're there's too many boys. There's too, there's many, too boys, many boys. And they're too not many paying chefs. attention. And she's right, man. If Rhaenyra mm. gets power, it, it's in her best interest to kill off all these yeah. people. Uh, and she's angry now. And Allison knows how much she's pushed Rhaenyra over this last decade. 100%. And she's like, we cannot mess around. You've got to take this seriously. Please. That's, that's, that's maybe like the saddest thing. I know I'm going off the rails here during the power game. Like that's the saddest thing to me about the situation is seeing all those boys interacting. Now, granted, they play a trick on Aegon with the pig, but it, that is lighthearted. They're boys. They're yeah, boys being boys. boys. And they get a lot, seeing them in the yard and they're training, and they're gonna, it's like all of these mm -hmm. guys could be friends and could get along yeah. if their parents weren't so well, mad at each other. Well, it's also if it wasn't and so it, political. And this is going to lead to the Dance of the Dragons. Yep. And these boys are going to be fighting yep. each other for real yep. very soon. Uh, and it's like, this all could have been avoided. It's so sad. This all could have been I, avoided. I, I, genuinely, I, I was thinking about that too. I was like, they're just having fun. Yeah. And I forget that they're like They kids. get along and they tease and each other and they're not oh. they're not separated by sides. I mean, you pointed out uh, all of Allison's kids always in green. Always in green. They don't get to wear red around there. Eee, tough, stuff, tough stuff. Tough uh, stuff. Okay, who's, who gained the most power on Rings of Power this week? Who do you think's up the most in power this week? I'll tell you mine. Mm -hmm. I think Farazon gained a lot of power this week. He's, Her cousin? Uh, he's, he's, yeah, uh, Muriel's cousin. How? She She's left town. Oh, just because she's he gone. gets, he's the she also acting took, king or she, Yeah, well, she also took most of the elf lovers with her, right? Yeah. Most of the people who are on the side That's of the elves, true. they've That's left true. now. That's true. So he, and his son is the one who was like, why are you letting him do this? Why are you letting these? He's like, son, be cool. Chill out. I got a long-term plan here. That's true. Uh, I think he's in a big position of power this week. Uh, I agree. I, I agree with that. Because now he's, he's, he's got this whole place to himself. Uh, she left true. the king's old and crazy in his bedroom. Uh, his son's blowing up ships. <laughs> Insane. Insane time. I, I think he gained a lot of power. I also think, you know, Adar is still gaining a lot of power. I was going to say Adar, but then I was like, when you said that, I was like, that makes sense. He, She literally left it to the hands of a man yeah, that hates she, elves. And he's he's got a long-term plan to get control yeah, of this Yeah, 100%. Nope. Uh, I, I don't agree. think it's going to work out for Numenor in the end, but, you know. Yeah, but, you know, play, play when you have it. Play, play while you have play it. Play what you got it. Who, this week, lost the most power? on House of the Dragon. <laughs> Who do you think lost the most power this Do the week? strong still count? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, they're dead? yeah, I think their family did lose power. I don't think Larys, Larys did Larys didn't lose power, but the Strongs, in the eyes which of is, everyone else, have lost a lot of power. Which is interesting. Gained the most power, lost the most power, the Strongs. Oh, that is very interesting. Uh, that's so interesting. That's quite a dichotomy. But I, well, I think that's the thing that when I say that they lost the most power, it's still like, even though they're dead, what they've already planted ha is still going to be sowed. Like, right. all the children, just like Strong's yeah, children. Yeah, but those aren't Rhaenyra. his kids. They're not, but I think people, they don't it's going to affect Renera mm. and it's going to affect the kids. I think the kid's going to be like, that was my dad. And right. Renera's going to be like, my my lover, my lover is dead. <laughs> and then like, I don't know what that, I think it was the Godfather. Either way. <laughs> but I think, I think that it's going to, it's going to hold on. It's going to hold on what they've done. And I, and I, that's why I think they're down. You think, well. they're, you think they're pretty down? Yeah. Yeah. Because Rhaenyra, at least she left. Yeah, Rhaenyra know? did so leave, she, she but like out. the Strongs, yeah, you're, you're totally right. While Laris gained the most power, like the Strongs overall lost a yeah, lot of power this lot. week. Uh, it is tough for their family. I think Viserys is still losing. Oh, I guess I forgot so about him. so much power. I just completely forgot about him because he's a dead he's man. He's losing. I mean, he's, he's a dead man walking he for is sure. He's literally a corpse. Barely walking. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> he's just like bored in his meetings. He's drinking all the time. He's just down. His wife's calling all the shots. Can you believe they were going to make a series where we didn't see the young Viserys? I know. And we were just going to look at ugly Viserys the entire time. I think the, the show is so smart to give us all that backstory. Because oh I think if this gosh, show started so with smart. this episode, you would be like, oh, Allison is just pure evil. She's a mm. Cersei, right? Uh, and like, you wouldn't understand that Rhaenyra is not pure good either. She's got her own demons and her own her own struggles and her problems. I'm really happy we got the young. And yeah, I mean, I we've only seen one of the adult episodes, but the young people episodes right. are my favorite. They yeah, were yeah. so fun. They it so set up good. so much good stuff, and I'm, I'm so glad they did that, and I think it was a very smart move for them to make. Agreed. Uh, well, that is it for this episode of Big Question Presents Talking Dragons. Uh, be sure to check us out each and every week right here on New Rockstars where we're talking about Targaryens, we're talking about Rings of Power, we're talking about it all. Uh, I'm loving both of these shows. I uh, can't wait to see how they wrap up. 
Don't forget to check out our many great merch options over at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow Jessica at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow me at Grin and Barrick and subscribe to Big Question wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in this week and for joining us on this journey. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll all see you here next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Dracarys. Kill me. Kill me, please. <laughs>